I'm Roberta Glass, and today I'm going to be talking about what everybody is getting wrong about Nexium. I just wanted to make a quick video as we are still waiting for the indictments to um, come forth in the Nexium trial about the false stories that have come out about Nexium and the false characterization. Firstly, we saw um, the story about Stormy Daniels when the Stormy Daniels story was hot concerning uh, her relationship or, you know, her foray with Donald Trump. And um, there was a story about her weird tattoo and that she was really a branded uh, member of DOS under Nexium. And I knew immediately that this was a fake story because, first of all, Nexium does not want a porn star. That's not Keith Ranieri's interest. He's a pedophile with an interest in controlling and perhaps corrupting really uh, wholesome kind of straight women. She neither had a enormous fortune like the Bronfmans or a kind of, um, you know, girlish wholesome image. That, those were the kind of women that were in Nexium, not a you know, buxom, um, extravagant porn star, you know, so it was like, I knew immediately it was a ridiculous story, but whatever, and Stormy Daniels came out and debunked it, and I think it, it kind of died down. Now this guy, Ben Shemkis, God knows who he is, has come out of the woodwork saying that he was at a party in 2007 and an incredible cast of characters was there, including Anthony Weiner and Huma Abedin and Stormy Daniels at this Nexium party that he was just invited to. And I tried to listen to the entire um, story, but I got about three minutes in and four or five minutes. It was just so ridiculous. First of all, it starts in a Yale library where two women come into the library. These are the Nexium recruiters. They're just going into the library looking for strangers to rope into this incredibly secretive group that's so secretive that the members have to hand over collateral, but they're gladly just go up to strangers in a library and recruit them to this uh, party, right? Anyway, so... Put that aside. But these two women, he says, were dressed up like they were going to a club. And it was so perfect because I was like, this is exactly, this is what I thought to myself, this is exactly what men think of now when they think of Nexium. It's some kind of crazy, bizarro sex fantasy for them. And so he's put them in these club clothes. When in reality, they were probably in some, like, all-natural... <laughs> I mean, you saw Allison Mack, right, when she got arrested. She was in kind of like a, um, a wraparound skirt and like a tank top, you know. But he has them like dressed to the nines, walking around a Yale library, picking up strange. It was just bizarre. And this guy says he'll take a lie detector test. Um, there's a very good article in the Frank Report just going one by one and debunking every single one of the parts of this story. Also, an interesting part of his story was that he remembered Keith Ranieri's um, consumer byline ads that were on uh, in the 80s. He remembers them. Well, he's the only one. I'm like, how is it possible that he only remembers the people that uh, are famous and that he also doesn't remember any of the smaller cast of characters, only the ones that have been written about, and he remembers just the tape that's been circulating around the internet of Keith Ranieri's uh, consumer byline scheme that he had going, that, uh, that advertisement for it. So it was, uh, I don't know what his motivation, if he wants fame, or if he just wants to be in the action, or what, or if he hates the Clintons, but this is just sort of like one of many stories, um, fake stories that have come out about Nexium, where uh, Claire Bronfman is a Clinton age. She's not, never has been. It's a Clinton cult. It's a Clinton child trafficking cult. N none of those things have been proven. And it has been suggested that Nexium itself put out the Stormy Daniels story. 
to steer the public away from the real crimes and have them occupied with this fake story and make the press look ridiculous. And if that is the case, I tip my hat to them because it worked. It really did make everybody who believed it look ridiculous. And I think there's so few people covering this story um, that people don't really have a good... Oh, good um, understanding about what this cult is about and uh, who it targeted. Um, so, anyway, so that is the misinformation kind of on the right conspiracy or it's a Rothschild cult. I mean, there are so many things to investigate in this story uh, besides this uh, that I don't understand why people are making things up. It, it, you need not make anything up when it comes to Nexium. It is a salacious, crazy um, cult all, all on its own. So, on the left, Vanessa Gorgonianis, ha who wrote the love letter to Nexium in the New York Times magazine, has given a interview to Meaning of Life TV. You can find it right here on YouTube. It's called All About Nexium. Uh, Are Col I'm, I'm sorry, Are Cohen Wade and Vanessa Gorgarianis, culturally determined, and that's Meaning of Life, all one word. Dot TV. Um, that's on YouTube. It's an interview with her talking about Nexium in glowing terms, as if it's the most original thing that's ever uh, been on planet Earth, that these people, even people who left, say it was a meaningful experience and that the tech worked. Now, if you've given as much money and that much time to something, it's really hard to admit that it was a total scam, right? Very few people come out of a cult and say, I learned nothing. It was totally meaningless. You have to sort of grasp onto any kind of positivity in it. But she goes on about how they were having deep introspection uh, and that they were having um, kind of therapy sessions with each other and that the women were really tight and that the people were extraordinary who were involved in this cult. And when the reality is, this is just like a run-of-the-mill cult. Cults are not original. All cults do the same kind of things with kind of minor variations. They're all exploitative. They all don't, don't encourage questions. They like to starve you. They like to sleep-deprive you. They like to work you to death. They like to tell you that you don't know anything and that that one person who's leading it knows everything. And everything you do to, is to the benefit of that one uh, person or one core idea. So it's a kind of us versus them, them being anybody who's not in the cult. And so the outside becomes very scary. And I, I encourage people to look up what makes a cult, what is a cult. And there's um, a... Um, great YouTube video that really encapsulates it um, by, is it Carrie, hold on, let me look it up. I had it right the first time, Carrie Burt um, called Mind Control Made Easy. And it's, a, I think it was his student film, but it's a very short uh, encapsulation, entertaining encapsulation of what, what, um, what are the primary characteristics of a cult. But Jessica Gorgonian, uh, I'm sorry, Vanessa Gorgonianis is looking at this thing like it's, like nobody's ever, um, that it's wrong to call it a cult. And just completely minimizing the fact that it was abusive. That women were starved, women were uh, told to run into trees, women were branded, um, that Keith Ranieri uh, is a pedophile that uh, girls and women were trafficked, trafficked, id, excuse me, trafficked, you know? Those things are just ignored for all the wonderful um, inner experiences that happened. So let's listen to her uh, describe why she wanted to write this piece. 
basically going back about 10 years in this group was this, they were teaching a lot of courses about gender relations and how to be um, a woman in the world and a man in the world and um, shift this gender war that they saw happening. So that was like a really key educational portion of the group. So she was like, that's what she was asking was called Jeunesse because all of their words are like, all of their companies are like these neologisms. So this group was called Jeunesse. Um, and I asked her why it was called Jeunesse and she was like, it's a made up word that women are defining as we define who we are. So I was like, okay. So she was trying to invite them to go to enroll in Jeunesse and learn about these different, you know, ideas. And like, you know, one of the things I really tried to do with this piece is really show, because I feel that a lot of the um, reporting about this has been, like, completely sensationalized and just makes these people sound like horrible freaks. And, you know, I, I really think there were um, incredibly smart and sophisticated people involved in this. And, like, when you went to a Jeunesse training, you know, yeah, it was an indoctrination in some ideas that I don't agree with. But it was also, like, again, going back to, like, life coaching, it was, like, a pretty intense, interesting experience, at least at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. It was an intense, interesting experience. I mean, what is, she, what is wrong with her? I mean, it's, it's like as if she has a... Excuse me, sorry. It's as if she has a... Um, turd in her hand and she's like well it's brown and it has an odor I mean a turd is a turd a cult is a cult and for a woman to look at this cult that was so damaging to women and to families and I saw Catherine Oxenberg at that bail hearing and um, she's in distress She's lost her daughter to this cult, and, and by all accounts, her daughter's lost her fortune in it. I mean, this thing is destroying people. And I'm sure it's a much more original take to say, well, I'm going to uh, talk up the good side. But I don't know if she's getting paid, or if she just wants to have an original angle, or if we've gotten to a point where we just don't understand cults anymore. I mean, I remember that when I grew up, um, there was uh, an emphasis, a little bit, on keeping people out of cults. We were educated um, in um, middle school, late middle school, uh, about what a cult is, because Jonestown wasn't all that far in the rearview mirror. But now it, it seems like, I don't know if we've gotten so into just supporting people that are exploitative or a culture that is no longer uh, able to feel empathy for each other. It's very strange. And um, the criticism that I've seen coming to um, Vanessa Gorganianis over this piece and her statements has really just been from the people that understand this, uh, understand this cult who've been involved with it. Um, and have left, um, Frank Parlato, um, some victims of the cult, me, but, I mean, it's am amazing to me that more people, uh, haven't, haven't spoken out and said, that, wait, this is really wrong. You know, it's as if she went to, uh, a KKK rally and said, well, you know, people are really getting a sense of, you know, or like KKK uh, organization and saying, well, people are really getting a sense of community out of this. You know, they really have a sense of bonding when they're burning crosses in people's backyards. I mean, it's so outrageous. Her, her take on this is, is so outrageous. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. This is going to be a slow month for recording for me. Um, just going to give you guys a heads up. But I felt like I had to say something about this. Um, and uh, I will be waiting for the indictments to come out. I have some stuff going on in uh, my personal life. Um, 
So it will be kind of a little bit rocky till July, probably, but I will try to put out as much as I can. Um, anyway, I really thank the people that leave such thoughtful, interesting comments. Um, I learn a lot from them. Thank you so much. If you have something to say about Nexium, please uh, leave it in the comments. If you have something to say about Janess, if you've read uh, Vanessa's article, or if you listened to the um, interview she gave, let me know what you think. And um, also, if you, have a, <laughs> if you have an opinion on what is motivating um, Ben Shemkis and his crazy story, let me know. Leave it in the comments. Um, thanks, thank you so much, everybody.